Our lesson today is to be able to solve and graph one and two step inequalities. A couple of key ideas here. Uh, first, we have the addition property of inequality, which says that when you add the same number to each side of an inequality, uh, the inequality remains true. For example, if we start with the inequality that says negative 4 is less than 3, and we add 2 to both sides of that inequality, I still get uh, an inequality that is true. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, 3 and 2 is 5. By adding 2 to both sides of that initial inequality, we get the inequality negative 2 is less than negative 5. It's a true statement. Right? That illustrates the addition property of inequality. We also have the subtraction property of inequality, which says that when you subtract the same number from each side of an inequality, the inequality remains true. If we start with the inequality negative 2 is less than 2, and we uh, subtract 3 from both sides of that inequality, the resulting inequality is negative 5 is less than 1, negative 1, which is a true statement. So these properties the addition property of inequality and subtraction property of inequality are true for less than or equal to and greater than or equal to as well. So let's start with our first example. All right. We're asked to solve the following inequality. The number minus 5 is less than negative 3. And we want to graph the solution. Well, we start by identifying the operations we see. We see subtraction. We're going to use the inverse operation to find the solution to the inequality. All right, so we're going to add 5. Uh, let's use a thinner pen there. All right, we're going to add 5 to both sides of the inequality. I'm going to add 5 to the left side of the inequality, and I'm going to add 5 to the right side of the inequality. On the left side of the inequality, negative 5 and 5, it's going to become 0. So I'm left with just x on the left side of the inequality. The inequality symbol stays the same. And then on the right side of the inequality, we have negative 3 plus 5. That's going to be positive 2. So our solution says that x has to be less than 2. Well, I always like to check the inequality. So I pick a value that's less than 2, see if we get a true statement. I know that 0 is less than 2. Let's try 0 and see if 0 is going to make this inequality true. 0 take away 5 is negative 5. Negative 5 is less than negative 3. Right? So I get a true statement, so I feel good about the solution. When we graph the solutions of an inequality, we graph the solutions on a number line. The number line shows the solution set or the graph of the inequality. So we always start with 0 on the number line, and then we want to be on the right side of 0 because the solution is x is less than 2. So we show 2 on the number line. Our solution says x is less than 2. So we're going to circle 2 on the number line. But the circle is going to remain open because 2 is not a solution of that inequality. The inequality symbol points to the left. So our solutions are less than 2 on the number line. Those solutions are to the left of 2 on the number line. So that's what our graph would look like x is less than 2. The graph of that solution, 2 is circled on the number line. It's an open circle. Arrow goes to the left. All right. Let's try a couple of examples down here. All right. Let's try uh, example number 1. I see subtraction, so I'm going to do the inverse. I'm going to add 6 to both sides of the inequality. On the left side of the inequality, that's going to be 0. I'm left with y is greater than 7, negative 7, and 6, that's going to be negative 1. That's the solution of the inequality. I want to graph that solution. So I draw my number line. I always want to put 0, locate 0, and which side of 0, left or right, is my solution? Well, my solutions are, my inequality says y has to be greater than negative 1. Negative 1 is on the left of 0. We're going to circle negative 1. It's an open circle, and my solutions are to the right of negative 1 on the number line, so I draw the arrow that direction. Right. Example 2. A number, take away 3 and 8 tenths, is less than or equal to 1 and 7 tenths. I want to do the inverse of this subtraction, so I'm going to add 
3 and 8 tenths on both sides of the inequality. That's going to be 0. I'm left with B. It's going to be less than or equal to. That's going to be what? 7 and 8 is 5. Carry the 1. That's going to be 5 with a decimal point. So B is less than or equal to 5.5. There's my solution. When we graph the solution, I draw my number line. I locate 0. I'm to the right of 0 when I'm at 5.5. I'm going to have a closed circle because 5.5 is a solution of that inequality. My solutions are to the left of 5.5 on the number line, so my arrow is going to go to the left. Our next example, I'd want to add 1 fourth to both sides of the inequality. That's going to be 0. I have negative 1 half plus 1 fourth. Right? This is negative 2 fourths, negative 2 fourths plus 1 fourth is going to be negative 1 fourth is greater than z. But here we have the reversed inequality. And a reversed inequality means the variable does not come first. What do I mean? Well, if I look at my first inequality, the variable comes first, then the inequality symbol. My second example, variable comes first, then the inequality symbol. When the inequalities are written that way, the direction of the inequality symbol shows us the direction of the solutions. Once again, the direction of the inequality symbol shows us the directions of the solution. When we have a reversed inequality, the direction of the solutions are going to be in the opposite direction. What do you mean? Well, here's negative one-fourth on the number line. I want to circle negative one-fourth. It's going to be an open circle. But because my inequality points to the right, my solutions are going to be in the opposite direction. All right? So anything less than negative one-fourth on the number line is going to make that true. And think about what that inequality says. This inequality says that negative one-fourth is greater than, is more than the number. Well, in order for negative one-fourth to be more than a number, negative one-fourth would have to be to the right of all those numbers on the number line. Right? So we have to be careful with the reversed inequalities. Okay, let's solve some inequalities using subtraction. Right? In our first example, I see addition. So I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides of the inequality. I wind up with negative 1 is less than or equal to x, right? Because these are opposites, and that's going to be 0. But once again, we have to recognize that we have a reversed inequality as the solution. So we have to be a little bit more careful when we graph that inequality. All right? I locate negative 1 on the number line. There it is. I'm going to circle negative 1 on the number line, but I'm filling in that circle. And because this is a reversed inequality, inequality symbols pointing to the left, when we have a reversed inequality, the solutions are in the opposite direction of the inequality symbol. So my graph is going to go in the opposite direction of the inequality symbol because it is a reversed inequality. Reversed inequality means the variable is not first, right? The integer is first. Okay, let's take a look at these examples. I want to add 7 to both sides of this inequality to find the solution. On the left side of the inequality, that's going to be 0. We're left with w is going to be less than or equal to. Negative 10 plus 7 is going to be negative 3. When we graph that solution, we start with our number line. Here's 0. Here's negative 3 on the number line. I'm going to circle negative 3 on the number line, and it's filled in. And because my variable comes first, my inequality symbol is going to point the direction of my solutions. So we're going to be to the left of negative 3 on the number line. Let's take a look at our next example. Here we're going to have to add 10 to both sides of the inequality. That's going to be 0. But negative 7.5 plus 10, that's going to be positive 2.5. It's going to be greater than or equal to D. We have to recognize that that's a reversed inequality because the variable is not first. So I'm going to have to locate 0 on the number line and 2.5. I'm going to circle 2.5 on the number line and fill it in because it's greater than or equal to. 
but because it's a reversed inequality, my solutions are going to be in the opposite direction of my inequality symbol, so my solutions are going to be to the left of 2.5 on the number line. Problem 6, we're going to have to add, or I'm sorry, subtract 3 fourths from both sides of the inequality. That's going to be 0. I'm left with x now is greater than, well, what's 1 and a half? Take away 3 fourths. That's going to be positive 3 fourths. I want to graph that on my number line. So here's 0. Here's 3 fourths. Let's extend that page a bit. All right, that's going to be my 3 fourths. We are going to circle that 3 fourths, but it's going to be an open circle. And because it's not a reversed inequality, the direction of the inequality symbol is going to point to the direction of my solutions. All right, next page. Uh, we have a word problem. It says a person can be no taller than six and a half or six and a quarter feet to become an astronaut pilot for NASA. Your friend is five feet nine inches tall. Write and solve an inequality to represent how much your friend can grow and still meet the requirement. Well, a couple of steps here. First, five feet nine inches tall. Notice that measurement is written in feet and inches, and then the other measurement is written uh, as a decimal. So we can do one of two things. Uh, let's rewrite that five feet nine inches, the height of your friend. Let's rewrite that as a decimal as well. Five feet nine inches, nine is three quarters of twelve, three six nine twelve, so that's going to be five point seven five, right? Inches, right? That's the height of your friend. So write and solve an inequality that represents how much your friend can grow, and still meet the requirement. Okay. Well, a person can be no taller than six and two five feet. All right. So we would start with the 5.75 inches plus some height that that person can grow. But that height can be no taller than, right? No taller than. Well, what inequality would we use for no taller than? Well, no taller than means we could be equal to or we could be less than. So no taller than would be less than or equal to than our 6.25. So there's the inequality we would write. We would solve that inequality by subtracting 5.75 from both sides of the inequality. On the left side of the inequality, that's going to be 0. So n is going to be less than or equal to, right? That's 0, that's 5, that's 12, 7 to 12, that's 5, decimal point. So n is going to be less than or equal to, right? one half inch or 0 0.5 inches. All right, let's take a look at our next word problem. It says your cousin is five feet three inches tall. Write and solve an inequality to represent how much your cousin can grow and still meet the requirements. Well five feet three inches if we write that as a decimal three six nine twelve right that's one quarter five and one quarter uh, feet which would be 5.25. So we would start with 5.25, that's the height of your cousin, plus some amount, and that has to be less than or equal to 6.25. Alright, here we're going to subtract 5.25 from both sides of the inequality. On the left side of the inequality, that's going to be 0, and it's going to be less than or equal to right that would be one foot would be the solution okay we continue here we're going to look at the multiplication and division properties of inequality and essentially they say that you can multiply both sides of an inequality by the same amount the inequality remains true and over here it says uh, we give an example all right but there's another case that we have to be uh, careful of. When we multiply both sides of an inequality, let's see, by a negative number, right, that's going to be a little bit different. 
But here, right, we're talking about multiplying both sides of an inequality and dividing both sides of an inequality by the same positive number. All right, so let's take a look at that. In our first example, we want to solve this inequality. It says a number divided by 5 is less than or equal to negative 3. All right, so I want to do the inverse or opposite of dividing by 5. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the inequality by 5. 5 in the numerator is going to cancel 5 in the denominator. So we wind up with x is going to be less than or equal to negative 3 times 5, negative 15. Okay, if I'm graphing the solution, we have our number line. Here's, oops, other way. Here's 0. Here's negative 15. I'm going to circle negative 15 and fill it in, and our solutions are to the left of negative 15. All right. Let's try these three examples All right, down here. All right, let's see what they'll look like. First one, where we see division, we want to use the inverse operation, so we're going to multiply both sides of that inequality by 3. All right. I would prefer that we write it this way. A number divided by 3 is less than 1. And then we show that we multiply both sides of the inequality by 3. 3 in the numerator is going to cancel 3 in the denominator. N is going to be less than 1 times 3 is 3. There's our solution. If we're graphing that solution, we start our number line. Here's 0. 3 is to the right of 0 on the number line. We're going to circle 3, but it's going to be an open circle. And our inequality symbol points left, so our arrow is going to point left as well. If I'm looking at the next example, I see division. The opposite of division is going to be multiplication. So we're going to multiply both sides of that inequality by 10. 10 in the numerator is going to cancel 10 in the denominator. 10 times negative 0.5, that's going to be negative 5, less than or equal to uh, m. When we go to graph that solution, be careful. Recognize that it's a reversed inequality. So I'm going to have 0. I'm going to have negative 5, which is to the left of 0 on the number line. Our inequality symbol is less than or equal to. So we're going to fill in that circle. But because it's a reversed inequality, my solutions are going to be in the opposite direction of my inequality symbol. All right. And then our last one. We have 2 thirds times p. The opposite of 2 thirds times p would be to multiply both sides uh, by the reciprocal. But rather than do that, let's do this problem another way. I see division. I'm going to start by multiplying both sides of the inequality by 3. 3 in the numerator is going to cancel 3 in the denominator. 3 times negative 3, I get negative 9 is greater than 2 times p. And then I want to do the opposite of this multiplication, which is division. So we divide both sides by 2. They cancel. Uh, not positive 2, right? right? Not negative 2, positive 2. So let's redo that. We divide both sides by 2. And negative 9 divided by 2 is going to be negative 4.5 is going to be greater than P. Once again, recognize that it's a reverse inequality because the variable is not written first. So I'm going to write 0. Negative 4.5 is to the left of 0. It's going to be an open circle. And my inequality symbol points to the right. But because it's a reverse inequality symbol, my solutions are going to go in the opposite direction when I graph it. Okay, our next example. I see multiplication. The opposite of multiplication is division. 6 in the numerator cancels 6 in the denominator. I'm left with 1x is going to be greater than negative 18 divided by 6. It's going to be negative 3. There's my solution. We graph it. We're going to have 0. Negative 3 is to the left of 0 on the number line. We're going to circle negative 3. It's an open circle. Arrows going to go to the right. We'll try a few more examples. I see multiplication. The inverse would be division. So we're going to divide both sides of that inequality by 4. 4 in the numerator is going to cancel 4 in the denominator. B is greater than or equal to. 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. That's our solution. We go to graph that solution. 
I'm going to have 0. I'm going to have 1 half. We're going to circle and close that circle. And my solutions are going to be to the right of 1 half on the number line because those values are greater than 1 half. Here I see multiplication once again. The opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide both sides of that inequality by 12. K is going to be less than or equal to. Negative 24 divided by 12 is going to be negative 2. There's my solution. All right. Let's reverse or graph that inequality. When we graph the inequality, let's see, I'm going to have 0. Locate negative 2 to the left of 0 on the number line. We're going to circle and fill in that circle because it's less than or equal to and our solutions are going to go to the left. Once again, I see multiplication, so I'm going to divide both sides of that inequality by 2.5. They cancel, that becomes 1Q. Negative 15 divided by 2.5, that's going to be what? Uh, that's 5, 10, 15, that's 6. And because it's negative divided by positive, that's going to be negative 6. Negative 6 is less than Q. It's a reversed inequality, so we have to be very careful when we graph it. I'm going to have 0. Negative 6 is to the left of 0 on the number line. I'm going to circle. It's an open circle, but it is a reversed inequality, so my arrow is going to go in the opposite direction of my inequality symbol. Okay. Multiplication and division properties of inequality all right, this is where we have to be very careful. When you multiply or divide each side of an inequality by the same negative number, the direction of the inequality symbol must be reversed for the inequality to remain true. Well, what are we talking about? If we start with the inequality, negative 4 is less than 6, and we multiply both sides of that inequality by negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. Negative 2 times 6 is going to be negative 12. We get the following inequality. Right? If I don't reverse it, I would have had uh, 8 is less than negative 12, which is totally not true. In order to make that inequality true, we have to reverse the inequality symbol. It was less than, we reverse it to greater than. The moment we multiply or divide that matter, uh, any inequality by a negative number, we have to reverse the inequality to make it true. Okay? Same thing happened if we divide. When we divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, we had to reverse the inequality to make that inequality true. It was greater than. The moment we divide both sides of the inequality by a negative number, we have to reverse that inequality to keep the inequality true. All right? And that certainly poses some problems right, when, we, uh, you know, when we do some math. So let's take a look at some examples here. Here, I have negative 3 halves times n is less than or equal to 6. Here, my first step, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 2. Multiply by negative 2 here. Multiply by negative 2 here. Negative 2 is going to cancel uh, in the numerator and the denominator. I'm left with 3 times n is going to be greater than or equal to 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. Notice that I reversed the inequality symbol when I multiplied both sides of the inequality by the negative number. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by positive 3. They cancel. And it's going to be greater than or equal to negative 4. There's my solution. We graph the solution. I start with 0. I locate negative 4 to the left of 0 on the number line. I'm going to circle negative 4. I'm going to fill that circle in because it's greater than or equal to. My, any, my solutions are going to be to the right of negative 4 on the number line. All right. Let's see what some of those examples are going to look like. Solve the inequality, graph the solution. Problem 7. All right. Let's recopy 7. Let's do it down here. We have a number divided by negative 3. It's greater than negative 4. I see that I'm dividing by negative 3, so the inverse operation would be to multiply right, both sides of the inequality by negative 3. Negative 3 in the numerator is going to cancel negative 3 in the denominator. So I'm left with x is less than, got to reverse the inequality, because we multiplied by a negative number. 
Negative times negative is positive, right? That's going to be 12. Right? We graph that solution. When we graph the solution, draw my number line. Here's 0. 12 is to the right of 0 on the number line. We circle 12. It's going to be an open circle. And my solutions are going to be to the left of 12 on the number line. All right. Let's try problem 8. We'll do that over here. Problem 8, we have 5 tenths. It's less than or equal to the opposite of a number divided by 2. My first step here, I'm going to multiply both sides by uh, negative 2. Multiply by negative 2 here. Multiply by negative 2 here. Right? Negative 2 in the numerator is going to cancel negative 2 in the denominator. So we wind up with negative 2 times 1 half. That's negative 1. Reverse the inequality symbol because we multiply both sides by a negative number. And that's going to be y. So y, we get negative 1 is greater than or equal to y. So the first place there where we have to be careful is when we reverse the inequality symbol. Then, let's see what we have here. We then need to uh, graph the inequality. I have 0, and I locate negative 1 on the number line. When I locate negative 1 on the number line, I'm going to circle it. I'm going to fill that in, but because it's a reversed inequality, my solutions are going to go in the opposite direction of the inequality symbol, so my solutions are going to go to the left. All right. Question 9, we'll do down here. We have negative 12. Oops. Negative 12 is greater than or equal to, I just want to double check that, 6 fifths m, 6 fifths m. All right, here, I first want to multiply both sides of the equation by 5, so multiply by 5 over here, multiply by 5 over here, 5 in the numerator is going to cancel, 5 in the denominator. 5 times negative 12, that's negative 60, is greater than or equal to 6 times m. Got is notice that we did not reverse the inequality symbol because I multiply both sides by a positive number. A lot of times students will get confused because they see the negative number here, but we multiplied both sides by a positive number. We don't change the inequality symbol. Next step, we divide both sides of the inequality by a positive 6. Right? 6 in the numerator is going to cancel 6 in the denominator. Negative 60 divided by 6. We wind up with negative 10 is greater than or equal to m. Notice we have a reversed inequality. So I'm going to locate 0 on the number line. Negative 10 is going to be to the left of 0. We're going to circle negative 10 and fill it in. Because it's a reverse inequality, our solution is going to be in the opposite direction of our inequality symbol. All right? And our last problem, right, problem 10, is going to be down here, problem 10. We have negative 2 fifths times h is less than or equal to negative 8. just want to make sure I copy that correctly. My first step here, I'm going to multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 5. I'm going to multiply here and multiply negative 5 on the right side. All right. On the left side, they're going to cancel. I'm left with 2h, but because we multiply both sides by a negative number, we have to reverse the inequality symbol. Negative times negative is positive, so it's going to be positive 40. Our next step we want to divide both sides by positive 2. All right. So when we divide both sides by positive 2, 2 in the numerator cancels 2 in the denominator. We get h is going to be greater than or equal to 40 divided by 2 is 20. There's my solution. I graph that solution on a number line. I have 0. I locate 20 on the number line. That 20 is going to be circled and filled in and my solutions are going to be to the right of 20 on the number line. All right, we're going to stop our, oh, no, we have one more, oh, my bad, one more uh, page. 
uh, to work on. If we solve inequalities using division here, I see that we have negative 3 times the number. The opposite would be to divide both sides of the inequality by negative 3. They're going to cancel. Z is going to be less than negative divided by negative is positive. 4.5 divided by negative 3. That's going to be positive 1.5. Notice that we reverse the inequality symbol because we divided both sides of the inequality by a negative number. We graph that solution. Here's 0. Here's 1.5. We circle 1.5. It's going to be an open circle. Arrow goes to the left. All right. And then we have these examples down here. All right. Let's start with number 11. Put number 11 up here. All right, we have negative 5 times z is less than 35. First step, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. They cancel. Z is going to be greater than, that's going to be negative 7. We graph that solution. 0, negative 7 is to the left of 0 on the number line. It's going to be an open circle arrow goes to the uh, right. Problem 12. We have negative 2 times a number is greater than negative 9. Divide both sides of that inequality by negative 2. They cancel. A is going to be less than negative 9 divided by negative 2. That's going to be positive 4.5. Notice, once again, because we divided by a negative number, we had to reverse the inequality symbol to keep that inequality true. I have, uh, let's see, 0. Then we have 4.5. It's going to be an open circle. Arrow's going to go to the left. Problem 13. We have negative 1.5 is less than 3 times a number. All right. What's that going to look like? Well, here we divide both sides of the inequality by 3. 3 is cancel. That's going to be, uh, what's that? Negative 0.5 is going to be less than n. Notice we did not have to reverse the inequality symbol there. And we didn't reverse the inequality symbol because we divided by a positive 3. That's important that we see that. When we go to graph that inequality, draw a number line, 0, we locate negative 5 tenths to the left of 0 on the number line. It's going to be an open circle, but because it's a reversed inequality, the arrow, our solutions are to, going to be in the opposite direction of our inequality symbol. All right, and then finally, problem 14, we have negative 4 and 2 tenths is greater than or equal to negative 7 tenths w. We want to divide both sides of the inequality by negative 7 tenths. Right? Oops. They cancel. Come on. And that's going to be 1w. Uh, but because we divided by a negative number, we have to reverse the inequality symbol, and that's going to be uh, 7 tenths in the 4.2. That's going to be uh, negative, that's going to be negative, no, positive 6. Right, positive 6. If we're graphing that inequality, we draw our number line. Here's 0. 6 is to the right of 0 on the number line. We circle 6 and we fill in the circle, but because it's a reverse inequality, the solutions are going to go in the opposite direction. So just remember, guys, when you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, we have to reverse the inequality to make it true. And then also just be careful when we're graphing uh, the reversed inequalities. The solutions are going to be in the opposite direction of our inequality symbol. All right, I hope that was helpful. And... Uh, I'm going to stop it right there.